Hello and welcome to Lovely English Stories. Thank you for stopping by. Check out our language learning productivity packs on Etsy. Link in the description below. Use code YouTube10 for 10% off. This story is written for intermediate English learners. Ready? Let's get started. B2 English Story. There for you. Josie was a carer. She had been a carer for many years. She had always wanted to be a paramedic, but life had thrown some curveballs at her, so she wasn't quite there yet. Josie was 36. For the last 16 years, she had worked as a carer for her parents. Unfortunately, her mother had a degenerative disease and her father had early onset Alzheimer's. She cared for her parents out of love. She knew they would do the same for her. After all, they had cared for her until they both became ill. It was incredibly sad for Josie to see her parents become more ill over the years. She sometimes had respite and carers from the NHS would come in and take care of her parents for her so she could have a holiday. But she always worried about them when she wasn't there. This wasn't the life she had envisaged, nor was it the life her parents had wanted for her. Josie's father had become so confused and disorientated that he would have to move to a specialist care home full-time. Josie and her mother knew this was for the best, but she couldn't shift the feeling that she felt like a failure. She had done all she could, and it wasn't enough. She had to remember that with diseases like Alzheimer's, there comes a point when specialist care is a necessity. Josie's father was only 62. He had worked all his life until he started to become confused, forgetful and aggravated. He went to see the doctor when he was 58 and they sent him for some tests. The results confirmed their worst fears. From that day onwards, he had to give up his job as an airport security manager he tried to keep as active as he could, but as time progressed, so did his illness. He couldn't remember where anything was, he was forgetting who his daughter was, and he was becoming a shell of his former self. When he had his diagnosis, he told Josie and her mother that he didn't regret anything. He had done everything he had wanted, and had lived a full, happy life. It was heartbreaking to see his steady decline. Josie had managed to get her dad into the care home he had specified before he got too ill. He had a tour of the home 18 months prior and said he would be happy there. That gave her some comfort. Once he had moved in, she went to see him three times a week. They had set a routine. She would visit at 10am and take him his favourite biscuits. Then they would sit together and watch TV or play a card game. Although her dad no longer remembered his daughter, he still knew how to play cards. Josie still lived with her mum in her childhood home. Her mum was mentally fine, but her body was becoming weaker, meaning she had to bathe her, wash her hair, make her food and dress her. She regularly took her mum out in her wheelchair and they managed to live a somewhat normal life. She was always there for her, just like her mother had been there for Josie when she was growing up. The only problem was, outside of her caring duties, Josie did little else. All her friends' lives had moved on. 
They had travelled or lived abroad or had children. Some had been married and divorced. Josie had not had a relationship since her early twenties. At times she felt lonely. At others she felt angry and frustrated. Her mother understood her concerns and encouraged her to get out and join clubs to meet people. Until now, it had been too difficult with her father being at home. But now things were easier. She signed up for a St John's Ambulance course. She had always been interested in healthcare and she wanted to expand on her skills. She took lots of short courses and was building a great portfolio of certificates. She also met some lovely people at the courses, some of whom were also carers. It was nice to have someone to talk to about her experiences and aggravations. One night, her mum caught her scrolling through her phone and asked her what she was doing. She explained that she was looking through the requirements to be a paramedic, something she had dreamed about doing since she was a teenager. Her mum encouraged her to apply. But what about you? If I do the course, I'll be out of the house most of the time. Her mother was a calm, considerate woman. You have to live your life, Josie. You've done enough for me now. We will cross that bridge when we come to it. Josie applied for the course. She already had a reference and a personal statement all written out. She knew her mother was right. Josie had taken on the majority of the caring responsibilities as her sister had children and couldn't always be there. Now her children were older, she would have the time to support them. Now it was time for Josie to pursue her dreams. It would be difficult and she would be racked with guilt. But she needed to have her own career, her own life and her own goals. She knew that whenever she wasn't at university or working, she would be there for her mum. She was her best friend and confidant. Let's go through some of the vocabulary from this story. Confirm. Confirm. To confirm is to prove that something is true. Considerate. Considerate. To be considerate is to think about the feelings and needs of other people. Envisage. Envisage. To envisage is to imagine or expect something in the future. Necessity. Necessity. A necessity is something that is needed. Comfort. Comfort. Comfort is a pleasant feeling of being free from worry or pain. Concerned. Concerned. To be concerned is to be worried. Failure. Failure. When something or someone is a failure, it means they do not succeed. Guilt. Guilt. Guilt is a feeling of concern or unhappiness because you worry you have done something wrong or maybe upset another person. Requirement. Requirement. A requirement is something that you need or something that you must do. Responsibility. Responsibility is something that is your job or duty to deal with. Shell. Shell. A shell is the hard outer covering of something. If someone is a shell of themselves, it means that perhaps they are unhappy or empty. Specialist. Specialist. A specialist is someone who has a lot of experience or knowledge in a particular subject. Specified. Specified. 
This is the past tense, the past participle of specify. And this means to explain, request, or describe something clearly and exactly. Statement. Statement. A statement is something that someone says or writes officially. Steady. Steady. If something is steady, then it happens in a smooth or gradual way. It does not happen suddenly. Degenerative. Degenerative. A degenerative illness is one in which the body or a part of the body gradually stops working. Disorientated. Disorientated. If you're disorientated, you might be confused about where you are or what you are doing. Aggravated. Aggravated. If you're aggravated, you might be feeling frustrated or annoyed and sometimes you might be violent. Diagnosis. Diagnosis. A diagnosis is a judgment about what a particular illness or problem is. Confidant. Confidant. This is a person you trust and share your feelings and secrets with. We hope you enjoyed this lovely English story and the vocabulary explanations. Don't forget you can download our language learning productivity packs on Etsy. Use code YouTube10 for 10% off your order. Link in the description box below. Thank you for stopping by and don't forget to like, subscribe and share. See you soon.